Hello, my more brothers. Back again, and it must be a holiday season because I'm rambling and less more focused videos. I know you guys complain that I'm not giving you enough focused videos on automation and geopolitics, money, science, esoteric values, blah, 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 blah. I, I know. I get it. I get it. I get it. And I will get to that. Okay. I know I'm behind. You know, constantly behind on my culture series. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I just feel like rambling because these are the thoughts in my mind as they come up. You know, you lay here and it's dark and just before dawn and thoughts come to you. And um, this Patrick Patterson, I think his name's Patrick Patterson. I do believe that's his name. The NBA basketball player that plays for the Clippers. Uh, they're having this embarrassing moment about being married to a white woman and the comment he had even though he didn't name them out loud you know he inferred black women are bulldogs and i've listened to everybody else's comments and i will agree that it's him being a public figure he should not have publicly embarrassed our, our black women for solidarity's sake especially when you're married to a white woman and there's a phrase that was going on that we used to say at work amongst the black men when something like that would happen. I think that the, the last time, well, it's not the last time, but there was a significant time where an um, incident had happened in Los Angeles. White man, it's a white man, wasn't a black man, a white man. Engineer, um, was married, kind of a cuck. I would say the, the beta male. Uh, had a decent wife, she divorced him. Took everything, took his house, took his bank accounts, took his kids, took everything. And then he had a small amount of money to relocate. I think it was his, it, what was left of his life savings. And his wife was so, I would say vindictive, she wouldn't even let him have that. So I think he was down to his last $20,000 that he needed to relocate so he wouldn't be homeless. And his lawyer called him in and told him he had to turn it over. So... He sadly turned the money over, which I probably wouldn't, but he turned the money over and he plotted his revenge. And I think it was during, it was a Christmas party. It was Christmas. And it was actually a sad case where they had a family gathering in his house, as a matter of fact, his house with his wife, his mother and his mother-in-law all in there celebrating and celebrating his demise. So he plotted his revenge on all his, the women in his life. Now, normally he would have thought this would have been a black woman in a black family and, and them doing to a black guy because black guys have, have constantly have these stories about the gynocracy. But it's kind of unusual in, in the white arena and they, they can't take it because this is just not done in their, normally in their, in their culture. But he plotted his revenge. When they were celebrating, he went out around the outside, locked all the doors. He went inside, he poured gasoline inside the house. He shot a few people and then he burnt that house to the ground. And the only sad part that I regret is there was a little three-year-old that didn't deserve any of that. That saw him in the Santa Claus suit pouring the gasoline and he still let that little girl burn. Now that I didn't agree with. In fact, the whole episode I didn't agree with. And nobody at work, we all, all the fellas talked about it. Nobody agreed with anything that he did. He's wrong for doing it. He was evil bastard for doing it. And there was one phrase that came out of that, that to a man, we all said, I don't condone what he did, but I do understand. I will say that with Patrick Patterson. I don't condone what he did. I don't condone what he said, but I do understand. And then you went. Now, I've heard lots of people talk, even amongst the masculine order. Valdez had his view on it, and Tareen Rain had his view on it. I, well, I can't link Valdez's in it because Valdez had to take his down, but I'll link Tareen's view in the description about palm-colored people and palm-colored Becky. Now, I agree with Tareen. You should not put palm-colored Becky or palm-colored people on a pedestal. They are historically your oppressors, and you should not put your oppressors on a pedestal. I agree with that. I am not sexually attracted to white women. I never have been. So I agree with Tareen. I also agree with Angry Man. 
that at the end of the day, it don't matter. At the end of the day, that man is not bound by rule to marry or date or have sex with a black woman. This is America. There is no rule. There is no social rule that binds Patrick Patterson. I don't care what his station is. I don't care whether he's a billionaire, like Robert F. Smith, who also has a palm-colored woman, or Tyrone banging a fat trailer park palm-colored woman. At the end of the day, he has the freedom to do what he wants to do. Just like our women have, have, have had since the f doggone 16th century, for 500 years, have had the option to have sex with marry, date and marry palm-colored men. They've always had that option. That was exercised in the Harriet Tubman movie, where a palm-colored man was, was a hero. Make that make sense. So, but the thing is, at the end of the day, this is America. They can mate with who they want to mate with. They still do it on the continent. Nigerian women, Ghanaian women, actually paying white men to, to seed them. Make that make sense. And just because palm-colored Becky is what she is in the palm-colored people, for lack of a better term, are who they are. And then their track record is historical about who they are and what they do. The word colonizer that came out of Black Panther fits them to a T. That's what they are, they're colonizers. That does not excuse black women of their sins. It doesn't. It doesn't erase their reputation. Now say what you want to about palm colored people, white women. You can say what you want to about Asian women or whatever their culture is. You can say what you want to about why we are who we are as far as men and women in our culture. That doesn't erase the fact. If a magician turns you from a human being to a frog, okay, well, you were once a prince, but hey, the fact is right now you're a frog. Is it your fault that you're a frog? No. But the fact is, is that you're a frog. Now, I know what he meant when he called black women bulldogs. It had nothing to do with their looks. Nothing. It had nothing to do with their looks. It had everything to do with what black men complain about. It had been complaining about for decades. You've been hearing it in blues songs for decades. And just start. Du Bois wrote about it back in 1890. Frazier wrote about it in the 1930s. Clark wrote about it in the 1950s. William Julius Wilson and Sher Shahrazad Ali talked about it in the 80s. We're talking about it in the 21st century. It's black women's attitudes. It's not their looks that make them bulldogs. It's their attitude that makes them bulldogs. And that's the reputation that they have. And I wish that it was a reputation that black women were embarrassed about. But unfortunately, they're not embarrassed about it. They embrace it. That's what we've been going back and forth with April Mason about. And she's supposed to be one of the, quote unquote, one of the good ones. So much so that Kevin Samuels did a video. I'll link it in the description. If it's still up, I'll link it in the description. Talked about fake femininity. This new wave of fake femininity because now black women can't depend on daddy government and depend on this uh, feminist culture to supply them with what they need. So now they need to retrench their attitudes and retrench their history and clean up their image so they can actually get a decent man again because now they need him. So now they have to put on this fake mask and pretend like there's something that they're not. And I'm going to tell you, at the end of the day, I don't have no problem with it. You get in where you fit in. You do the best that you can to get what you need. I don't have no problem with it. But Patrick Patterson even though I agree with Tareen. That's one thing I agree with Tareen about that video. It was a Freudian slip. He got pissed off. He got punched in the face about his wife and reverted. The, the true him came out. I agree with that. But the one thing that we're not saying is, is he wrong? Everybody says that he shouldn't have said it. I agree 100% that he should not have said it. It should not have slipped out of his mouth calling his women, his group of women, his demographic bulldogs. But like I said, I don't condone what he said, but I do understand. And the thing is, that's what saddens me. I'm not beating my chest like, aha, damn, somebody told them bitches. I'm not beating my chest like Eureka, I found it. No, I'm not doing that. I'm saddened 
And just like every other man that covered this story, even Tareem, is saddened because we know he's right. They had their reputation and they embraced that reputation. How do I know? Kevin asked, uh, uh, was talking about femininity and how you should act feminine when you're pressed, when something, uh, when you come up against, uh, say, like a man, say, like a, a man maybe threatening or uh, is in a alpha situation, how do you react? Do you act feminine? Do you act submissive? Do you act uh, vulnerable? Do you act like you uh, like a, a damsel in distress? Do you put on that cloak when you're pressed? And so Kevin must have had at least a couple hundred women in the, viewing him, and you know, a hundred women viewing him. And so he asks, he said, put a one in as if you act feminine and you are, or you, or you sh will shrink back in the face of a, a masculine man when you're pressed. And put a two in if you don't. I don't have to tell you what the answer was when he asked that question. I don't have to tell you. Are you going to be the dainty damsel in distress, the feminine dainty damsel in distress, or are you going to be the bulldog? Now, this is not Kevin telling them what to say because he completely expected a different answer. He expected them to lie, which is one reason I love YouTube. I love social media. I love the anonymousness of it. Why is that? Because if you're in public and people can identify you, you're going to lie. You're going to put that mask on and you're going to hide behind it. But when you, have, you can hide behind the barrier of being anonymous, guess what you're going to do? The true you will come forward and say, you know, the fuck it, I'm going to say what I feel. He got number twos. I think, I don't know if he even got a one. I think he got nothing but twos. And he just, he just shook his head. He says, you see all these twos? Do you see all these twos? Do you see all these women that are choosing to be bulldogs? Now, you chose to be bulldogs. You chose to be that masculine, aggressive, independent woman. You've chosen this persona. Trust and believe. I've been around Asian women. I've been around Hispanic women, white women. Trust and believe. You know, and I've dated nothing outside of a couple of different races. I've dated nothing but black women. Well, unfortunately, I'm attracted to really do nothing but black women. That is the that is my, my blessing and my curse. And I always wish that I was attracted to white women or something else, because guess what? I am not getting that part. I'm not getting that feature. I'm not getting that the different aspect that I wish that my women have. And they don't. You know, my grandmother, you know, loved her to death. My mother loved her to death. OK, I, I look at April Mason. I know she who she is. And God bless you. I'm not even cracking on April Mason. I know who she is. There are no dainty women in my family. I had to think about that. There are no dainty women in my family. I don't have any retiring roses or clutch the pearls type of women. I don't have them. I had maybe one woman that was like that. Out of all the black women that I've dated, out of all the black women that I've been around, I had one that was like that. One out of the hundreds of women I've been with, I had one that was like that. That's my fault because, I, you know, at the end of the day, you pick the women that you're with. But the mother of my children even, even sounds like April Mason. April Mason's a tomboy. I know April Mason's a tomboy. Even with the heels and the makeup and the hair and all that stuff. At the end of the day, I know she grew up a tomboy. I know it because my ex, same color, same attitude, is a tomboy. And the same is what April Mason's saying about who, who uh, her being black and pretty and shapely and all that kind of stuff. And the kind of guys that are attracted to her. I know that's true because my ex is like that. My ex is even darker than she is. But she grew up a tomboy with the same attitude. But we ain't going to even get into that. But Patrick Patterson was not saying that black women are physically bulldogs. They're not. What he's saying is, is that their attitudes, the way they carry themselves, the way they do things, that's what you get. And he's in a position to know. He's been in the NBA since 2010. He's been in the NBA almost 10 years. In the NBA, you get you meet all kinds of women from every different uh, octane, from every different class, from, from the rich, from the 100 octane all the way down to the 85. You meet them. You meet all different races. I mean, they, you know, they go to China. They meet Asian. They meet, in California, Hispanic black, whatever, they meet all of them. 
So when he says that, he knows what he's talking about. And when he says that, the reason that we, women, black women get upset and we get upset is because he is giving up a family secret. He ain't supposed to say it even though we know it. And the thing is, is that my daughters and I have two girls have to live with their legacy and they can only reflect the women that they're raised by and they are not dainty, okay? My daughter's beautiful. She can, she has, she can be elegant. She can be refined but I know who her mama is. They're not the, the kind of sip tea at the cotillion type of women. I'm just saying. Like I said, again, that's my fault. That's my culture. That's the way I was raised. That's the way I was socialized. And I could have chose something else. My, my son did. My son chose differently. And I can't blame him. But as far as this Patrick Patterson thing, bruh, I know you're a clipper. You're a homie. I know why you chose a different shade, a different culture. And um, would I have done it for myself? Probably not. As far as marrying a palm colored woman, would I have said it, said what, I, what, what you said in public using that particular name. Out of all the names you could have used, bruh, you might as well have called him a bitch rather than a bulldog. I don't condone what you did. I don't condone what you said. But at the end of the day, I do understand. With that, I'm going to end this Thanksgiving ramble. Uh, I hope you got your money's worth. <laughs> shout out to Tureen. Shout out to Angry Man. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. Shout out to Edward. You may not condone what I've said. You might con condone how I feel. You might not even condone the way I've said it. But at the end of the day, I know you're a black man and you deal with black women, you do understand. With that, I'm gonna jump off here, you guys.